yes, I'm Tavis Lomdi from Google, um, and this is my talk. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to be talking about some ideas that we've been using in, in uh, uh, exploring at Google to do with uh, fuzzing. Um, uh, the general idea is that while uh, a lot of research is, is, uh, is, being, uh, is being named at fuzzing, uh, in general, this is towards making uh, smarter fuzzers, making them have a better understanding of the protocol and states that a program uh, 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 can get into. Um, so, but uh, we generally consider this idea that might be uh, the wrong direction, and that, we, that uh, more research should be put into making software generically um, less smart and um, uh, removing uh, uh, the, the protocol that it supports and just making it uh, just a, a stream of bytes that's no different from uh, 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 just reading random data. Um, so yes, I've been calling this making software dumber as opposed to making fuzzers smarter. Um, so in its purest form, fuzz testing is really entirely blind to context and the protocol. Um, as it was originally designed by, uh, um, uh, and documented in, uh, I think it was the 70s, by uh, Barton Miller and, uh, uh, and colleagues, um, it was basically just output a, a stream of random data and pipe it into random Unix commands and see what happens. Um, so surprisingly, this always turned out to be remarkably successful. Um, but it's self-evident, really, that you can't apply this to anything more than the most basic, uh, the most basic software. Um, originally, it was piping random data into things like grep and awk and so on, seeing what happened. Um, but clearly, that's not going to be much use against a web server that requires um, um, a full protocol uh, header and so on before it uh, does anything at all. Um, so applying these, the core principles that made first testing so useful in it, uh, when it was designed has been, uh, um, it continues to be an active research topic and trying to apply these principles to uh, more complex software. So the earliest attempt at introducing uh, structure to fuzz testing was probably block-based fuzzing. Uh, and using this system, you basically define data structures that the protocol understands or the, or the program uh, will pass. And these are called blocks. And then the fuzzer will basically assemble blocks in a random order or mutate them or uh, break whatever rules you've defined. Um, and this way, it, try, it has some basic, uh, it has some, uh, basic way of communicating with the program. And it can try and break it this way. Um, the most notable example was Spike uh, by uh, Dave Vital. Um, and who, of course, broke, at the time, broke pretty much everything. Um, I think he's most famous for probably the, uh, the uh, Microsoft RPC stuff, and also IIS and, thing, and uh, some of the things. Um, another way of uh, uh, extending fuzz testing to um, apply to uh, uh, more complex protocols is uh, model inference-assisted fuzzing. Uh, basically, with model inference-assisted fuzzing, you have a, um, um, a detailed protocol specification, usually in the form of something like um, um, a BNF for the protocol. Uh, and then the fuzzer will uh, pass this specification and generate um, uh, protocol streams that break these specifications in some, in some um, uh, subtle way to try and explore uh, the program attack surface and break it in, uh, in interesting ways. Um, so once it's passed the specification, it's, it, it can deviate subtly from the specifications. And this is where interesting bugs are found. Um, so model and payment assisting fuzzers continue to expose serious implementation flaws in lots of software. Um, the, most notable, the most notable example at the moment is probably Protoss. Uh, these guys, I think they're from, uh, from uh, CertFI. Um, uh, they produce test suites now and then for various protocols using this method. And uh, when they release, they, they, they tend to break quite a lot of stuff that, uh, that uh, it's aimed at. Uh, they release things like HTTP test suites and uh, I think recently they wrote uh, Zip and other compressors. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. So um, model and payment assisted fuzzing is, is obviously a leap forward from just uh, the uh, uh, Devi random stuff that uh, fuzz testing uh, began with. But uh, reliance on protocol, on accurate protocol specification is a number of, presents a number of problems. Um, it's expensive to write, this, to write these specifications. Um, if you're lucky, the, uh, the vendor will provide a specification, or it'll be available in the RFC. But in general, these are pretty useless, because um, they don't follow a strict format. In RFCs, they generally use augmented BNF. But um, they t whenever, there's, whenever there's something that's particularly hard to describe in BNF, they tend to just put a comment and explain something in English, which obviously isn't much use. Um, I think one of the harder things is in ABNF that it's impossible to say you want the complement of something. So you can't say uh, this could be anything except for this, everything from this set apart from this. Uh, so people just tend to write that in English, um, which is obviously useless and impossible to pass. Um, 
Another problem with this is it's only really possible to model the specifications that uh, the vendor has documented. If there are some undocumented features or um, debugging features, um, or you're fuzzing an HTTP server based on the RFC, but it supports some, uh, some uh, proprietary features that the vendor hasn't documented, then you're pretty much in trouble because there's no way you're going to touch this stuff. Um, and this is important because this is where a lot of the bugs are going to be uh, in, uh, in uh, the, the stuff that's uh, not touched by many clients. Um, there's also a problem that if you're using, for example, um, and the HTTP specification to fuzz an HTTP server, then you, if the web server you're fuzzing doesn't support uh, something like DAV, then you're going to be wasting a lot of time fuzzing this stuff because, um, I mean, a large portion of the protocol describes this stuff. So you're basically just going to be hitting a very small amount of code um, and not getting much uh, fuzzing done. So, um, so a possible solution to this has been um, the introduction of feedback-driven fuzzing. So feedback-driven fuzzing attempts to monitor the application as you're fuzzing it and learn um, which parts of the code you're touching. So this is really cool because you can basically see what kind of coverage you're getting at runtime and uh, the fuzzer can make some decisions about what kind of code to touch. Uh, if it can see it's going down a particular path, it can try and continue down this path to reach some leaf node or something like that. Um, so most implementations that I'm aware of will uh, either use things like uh, f-instrument functions in GCC, which is a nice feature that um, allows you to define callbacks when new functions are called. It installs this at compile time, so that whenever a function is called, it'll uh, call your, uh, your callback. Or using, uh, alternatively, you might use DBI, uh, dynamic binary instrumentation. So at the moment, there are three major DBI frameworks in use. There's a pin tool from Intel, which is uh, some pretty cool technology, but it's available for Linux and Windows, but unfortunately, it's, it's uh, proprietary. And Dynamo Rio, which until recently was um, was proprietary, but then I've released it under a very uh, liberal license, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, it's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, there's also uh, Libvex and Valgrind from Julian Seward from the Valgrind project, um, which uh, has, it's, uh, because it's uh, open source, it's uh, quite useful on Unix platforms, uh, whereas the only other alternative was uh, PIN or Dynamo Rio, which were proprietary until recently. Um, on Windows, it's also quite popular to use uh, homebrew techniques, which is generally writing an, um, an ID script to uh, uh, spit out uh, uh, basic block boundaries and then uh, insert uh, software breakpoints at runtime and then just use uh, the uh, wait for debug event thing that uh, Windows provides. Um, it, it does the same job and it, uh, it, and it works. Um, and it's also, it generally performs better than DBI so as well, so if that's, a, if that's something you're interested in, it's quite useful. Um, some notable examples of feedback-driven fuzzing are Bunny the Fuzzer by Al Um He used uh, f-instrument functions from GCC and uh, EFS from Demot, um, which is an uh, evolutionary fuzzing system, I think. Um, and he used uh, basic uh, hill climbing and, um, and uh, feedback to try and uh, improve fuzz coverage. Um, so this has proven to be pretty effective, and it's really exciting stuff. Um, to be able to sort of uh, design this into a fuzzer and uh, see what kind of um, stuff we can do. Um, so I've been convinced that model inference assisted fuzzing is useful and perhaps a useful way to go uh, in uh, trying to fuzz more interesting software. Um, but it's still really expensive to set up. You still got to put a lot of, lot of effort uh, defining these specifications. Um, and uh, and uh, how it should interact with the, with the software that you're trying to fuzz. So I've been working on an alternative solution that I'd like to replicate the, um, uh, the same uh, kind of success of uh, model inference assisted fuzzing, but without, the, uh, without this overhead. So um, I've been trying to use this to explore uh, proprietary software and undocumented features and, uh, and uh, to explore interesting features of software that perhaps hasn't been touched by fuzzers before. Um, it's also useful for, as, as the Protoss project approved, they've been able to generate, uh, automatically generate test suites for, uh, for programs that apply generically and, uh, and uh, tend to find bugs even if they haven't looked at the, the original software. Um, and uh, I've been able to generate pretty good uh, quality regression test suites just uh, using these techniques. Um, uh, so